Okay, here is your nine for from chapter three on Pythagoras. So as we go through these questions, please make sure you have the correct answers written down. If you'd make have something that's not done properly, make sure you make a note of it because tomorrow when you write your test, you better know what you did wrong. So the, here's your nine questions. So your first question says, is 784 a perfect square proved with prime factorization? So if we take 784, and I say, okay, what's divisible into that? I know 2 is because it's an even number. And if I take my calculator, say, what is 784 divided by 2? It's 392. Since it ends in an even number again, I can take 2 out again. Take that 392. Divide it by 2, and that'll tell me 196. Since it ends in an even number again, I can take 2 out one more time. 196 divided by 2 is 98. And since it's even, I can still take 2 out, and then we get to 2 and 49. Now, 49 is in itself a perfect square because it's 7 times 7. Both are prime numbers. And therefore, we have 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 7 times 7 is one way to get the answer, which means if I rearrange them into two equal groups, I can get the answer of 784. So therefore, 2 times 2 times 7 is 28. And therefore, 28 times 28 is a way to get 784. And therefore, it is a perfect square. Yes, it is. What is this uh, square root? 28. Question 2 gives you this long string and asks you to solve it. So 4 squared, you have to put 16, plus the square root of 20, 121, which is 11, plus 5 squared, which is 25, plus 101 square rooted, which is roughly, approximately, if you round it up, about 10.1. Add those together. 16 and 11 is 27. 27 and 25 is 52. 62. 62.1, approximately. Because we had to estimate this, it's approximately 62.1. Question 3 says, is this 90 degrees? So there's two ways you could do it. The first way would be just to draw squares onto this and put the areas in each. And since 36 plus 64 does not equal 144, we can say, is this 90 degrees? No, it's not. No, it's not. I guess if it was the area of the two squares attached to the legs, it would add up to be the area of the square attached to the hypotenuse. And since 36 plus 64 does not equal 144, it is not 90 degrees. Now, a nice question would be, is this greater than 90 or less than 90? It would be greater because, of course, in order to get that larger than 10, you'd have to extend it this way to make that hypotenuse or that where that hypotenuse would have been greater than 10, which means it should be larger than 90 degrees. Next question says, what is the square root of 42 approximately? So if I think about what two perfect squares, the square root of 42 would be between, Square root of 36 is 6. Square root of 49 is 7. 42 is closer to 36 than it is to 49, but not much closer. So roughly there. So we would say it's roughly 6.4 or 6.5-ish, roughly. Take your calculator just to double check. 42 square root is 6.5. Pretty close to the middle probably closer to here right around there a 10 meter ladder is leaned up against a wall the minimum distance the ladder can be from the wall is two meters the maximum distance is five meters so here's your wall and here's your distance this is the wall and this is the distance and this is your ladder so the minimum distance in the first one is two meters and in the second one, the maximum distance for that ladder, this is the wall still, is 5 meters from here to here. So how far up the wall can it go here? And how far up the wall can it go here? That's the question. 
So if we think about what this would look like as just a right triangle, this one would be 2 meters, 10 meters, and x. And this one over here would be, oh, not 10 there, sorry. The ladder is 10 meters, the distance is 5 meters, and the wall is x. So we really have just this question twice. As the x being the wall is how far up that 10 meter ladder would go each time. So if I put squares onto each of these, 100, and 4, then is that is this going to be 104 or is it going to be 96? Which one of is, is it going to be there? The area of that square. Will it be 96 or 104? Since this is 100 and this is 4, what's the area of this square? 96. Because the area of the square is attached to the legs, this being a leg and this being a leg, have to add up to be 100, which makes this one 96. So therefore, how, how, how high up the wall does it go? It goes to the square root of 96, which is 9.8 meters. So when that 10 meter ladder is leaned up against the wall with a distance of 2 meters away from it, it will go up the wall 9.8 meters. In the second example, when it's 5 meters away from the wall, if I was to make my same squares here, this is 25 and 100, the area of the square attached to the wall now would be 75, and the distance it goes up the wall would be the square root of 75, which means it goes approximately 8.7 meters up against the wall if it was leaned up 5 meters away from the wall. Your next question simply gives you this picture, and I think it says solve with pictures, correct? So when it says solve with pictures on your test, just put squares onto it. Put the areas of each. 64 would go here. 256 would go here. 320 would go here. Is that right? 320 meters squared or whatever meters squared. So if the area of that square is 320, you can do it one of two ways. The easiest way, of course, is take your calculator and say, what is the square root of 320? 17.9. So therefore, x is approximately equal to the square root, or 17.9, um, or is exactly equal to, exactly equal to the square root of 320. And the second question says, use a formula here. So legs are always A and B, and your hypotenuse is C, or you can use any other letters, but typically we use that. Because in the theorem, this is our, our formula. So if A is 4, we're going to put 4 squared plus x squared equals 12 squared. Right? A squared plus B squared equals C squared. Simplify that to be 16 plus x squared equals 144. Subtract 16 from both sides using our algebra sense. Get rid of the constant. X squared will equal 128. And then if I want to solve for it, instead of saying what number multiplied by itself, I get square root both sides algebraically. To get X equals the square root of 128. Here's my calculator. Roughly 11.3. And your next question gives you an isosceles right triangle. An isosceles right triangle means these two legs are the same, which means if I drew squares onto them, the areas of each of those would be the same as well. And if the area of this one is 128 meters squared, then this plus this equals this. And since they're the same side, I can divide 128 by 2 to realize that each of these squares must be 64 meters squared. I guess 64 plus 64 is 128. And once I know that the area of those squares are each 64 meters, the question is, how long is the side length? So therefore, the side length would be the square root of 64, or 8 meters long. And your last question says, a rectangular park measures 160 meters by 80 meters. So I'm going to draw this. 160 meters by 80 meters. Now, Mr. Connell and Mr. Bridges 
are going to run around the park. Mr. Connell runs around the park one lap like that. Mr. Bridges, however, is a little shadier. He goes to the corner, and then he cuts across the park and goes back up. Okay. How much farther did Mr. Connell run is the question. So the first question for Mr. Connell, he ran 160 plus 80 plus another 160 plus 80. When he went around 160 plus 80 plus 160 plus 80, he ran 240 plus 240. He ran 480 meters. Does everyone agree with that? Correct. Mr. Bridges ran 160 right here. He also ran another 80. Plus he ran this distance here, which we have to figure out. Okay. And that distance there is really the hypotenuse of this right triangle here. Okay. So we're going to put squares on here. This would be 6,400. This would be 256 with two zeros. And this will be 32,000, I think. Is that right? Is that right? 32,000. Well, let's check. Let's check. The area of this square plus the area of the other square equals the area of the third, the hypotenuse square, which is 32,000. So once I know that, how do I get this distance? The square root of it. So take 32,000 and square root it. And roughly 179 meters is the distance there. So Mr. Bridges ran 160 plus approximately 179 meters plus 80 meters. So he ran 240 plus 179 is 340, 419. Everyone okay with that? So Mr. Connell ran 480 meters. Mr. Bridges ran 419 meters. So how much farther did Mr. Connell run? Take what he ran, subtract what Mr. Bridges ran, and you get 60, sorry, yeah, 61 meters more. So therefore, the final answer would be Mr. Connell ran 61 more meters than Mr. Bridges.